All right. We have three formulas here that we use at different times for different reasons. We use the first one anytime we have a change in temperature. We use the second one, Q equals mass times heat of fusion, anytime we have a phase change. So, at the melting point. And we use the third one for a phase change at the boiling point. For the question that's numbered number two, how much heat is absorbed or released when 20 grams of water at 30 degrees becomes ice at negative 10? To make this decision of how to approach the problem, I need to consider what phase it's in here and what phase it's in here. 30 degrees water is between the melting point and boiling point, making it a liquid. At negative 10 degrees, that's below water's freezing point. So it's gonna be a solid. Once I know that I have a phase change going on, that they're starting and finishing in different phases, I know it's a multi-step problem and I want to draw a heating curve. My starting point needs to go on there. <clears throat> My ending point. Traditionally, we put the boiling point and the melting point on there also. I'm not gonna need the boiling point, but the melting point I definitely need. So when I'm starting at 30 degrees to end up at 10 degrees, I need to descend to zero, freeze, and then cool the solid down. So this is gonna have three distinct phases. How I approach them, how I approach the problem from here depends on what phase it's in. So for phase one, actually I'm gonna use different numbers or different colors. For step one, I have a solid that's changing temperature. I'm sorry, it's a liquid here. I have a liquid that's changing temperature. I can tell it's changing temperature because it's going from 30 down to zero. So that means I'm gonna use the formula Q equals mass times specific heat times change in temperature. The mass of water is 20. At this point, it's liquid water. So I'm gonna use the specific heat of liquid, which is 4.18. The change in temperature from 30 to zero degrees is 30. Now I'm gonna multiply those numbers on my calculator. Twenty times four point one eight times thirty degrees gives me twenty five oh eight joules for that step labeled as step number one. Step number two, we have a phase change at the boy, at the melting point. So I'm gonna use Q equals mass times the heat of fusion. The mass is still 20 grams. To get the heat of fusion, I'm gonna go back up here. For water, the heat of fusion is 334. Twenty times 334 gives me 6680 joules. Third, I'm changing temperature again. So I'm gonna use Q equals mass times specific heat times change in temperature. The mass is still 20 grams, but now that it were below zero, the specific heat is different. For water that's in the solid phase, the specific heat is 2.06. And the change in temperature, I'm going from zero to negative 10 is a change of 10 degrees. Four hundred and thirty two joules. To get my answer to this problem, 
I now need to add this number, this number, and this number together. So the total is 2508 plus 6680 plus 432. Ninety six twenty nine thousand six hundred and twenty joules. The question explicitly asked me whether energy is being absorbed or released. If the temperature is going down and it's going from a liquid to a solid, it must be doing so by releasing energy. 